Like, maybe Iraq, yeah, uh, Saddam Hussein is putting that out. Foreign power that hates us. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I'm what sorry. Tom just informed me that's our new sponsor. Oh, we love that. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, it, it, that's the sickest thing I ever heard. I mean, I mean God damn, can you imagine being in that tower? I think about this all the time. Being in that tower, some plane comes crashing through. I wonder if you, like, even... Are you conscious to see the plane come through? Like, do you get sucked into some weird vortex or... But I know some people were just like, the the fire was going in the building. They had to jump out the window to their death. I mean, how the... How the hell could you make a game out of that? You gotta be out of your friggin' mind. Tell me about it. I'm for, I'm for fun comedy, outrageous humor, goofing on everything, but Jesus Christ... I've never seen a Pearl Harbor game. Why would there be a... Yeah, I just can't even imagine. September 11th. The mind that thinks that up. Well, who are they going to gear this towards, though? Perverts. I don't know. A lot of... That's insane. But 9-11 is... The worst horrible tragedy. And i got to say again, congratulations to President Bush... He just went in and took out Iraq for no reason, really. There's no weapons of mass destruction, and it's great. We just, we decided to go take out a leader of a country over there just because they screwed someone over there. So we don't know who did it. You know, plan we're, You know what that says to the, the Arabs? Go get your people in line, dude, because if you don't, we're going to keep taking out countries. You want to be crazy? We'll be crazy. We're crazy, too. We could be crazy like you. We're going to keep <laughs> removing you from power. You know the only what? thing I can't figure out is why they don't let Israel... React to when their buses get blown up. Why they're not allowed to go in and eliminate uh, Yasser Arafat and the whole Palestinian uh, country? I don't get it. That's terrorism. If someone came here and started blowing up buses and buildings, it'd be over. There'd be another country without a leader. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. You know, it's like if a cop kills a scumbag criminal because he has a knife and he doesn't find the knife on him. Plan it. The neighborhood's a better place without the guy. Right. <laughs> Plan exactly. A knife. Yeah, why didn't we just put some yeah, weapons? Plan a plan a there. weapon there. You know what story I can't figure out? What? I'm reading the paper today. Three guys were released. <gasps> I was going to talk about that. That is a crazy story. Three guys were released from prison. They were charged with rape and murder. And they went back now. Barry Shack did a DNA test. Turns out the three guys were innocent. <laughs> yeah, but do you realize I'm now reading the story? One of the guys confessed. Well, that's where I'm going with this. And turned in the other two. One guy of the three confessed after like a 38 hour interrogation or something. What the? I mean, how do you confess if you. They're prov it proves, the DNA test proved that these guys had nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with the murder or the rape. But he confessed. And I, gave him two more names. Well, why would you do that? And then he, later on he said, listen, I know I confessed, but I was confused and tired and I just, you know, I basically. But, but no matter how confused and tired you were, would you admit to rape and murder? Never. Under no circumstance. Yeah. And would you have other names to give people? Unless they were torturing the guy. And I don't think they were. But why would you pick two names? I don't understand how... I guess he didn't want to be alone in prison. Oh, man. <laughs> with that some buddies. Take some friends with you? Yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah, You're coming with me. I so mean, they... how pissed could those two guys be at you? <laughs> yeah. No. Good Lord. He even said in his confession, we dragged her into the truck. Uh, we it, it's, it's, it's my, I mean, I don't understand how that happened. It almost sounds like they did rape someone. It was just the wrong case. Yeah, I mean, it just, it's bizarre. I can't figure this case yeah, out. Yeah, that's why I said. Crazy story. I, it does not make sense. Yeah, right? I read Doesn't it and I just said, sense. I need somebody to explain this to me. <laughs> so I got to get to the bottom of this one. Goddamn world is crazy. Well, I think there's people out there just want to make money just for the sake of making money. They don't care what they're putting out there. The 9/11 video, yeah, I can't even imagine they'll make money with that. If they make money with that, that that's that's insane. Then we've gone, then we've gone straight to hell. I agree. No. wholeheartedly. Thank you. Thank you, Howard. Thank you, Terry. Hey, what's up, Howard? Hey, buddy. Hey, um, I'm just I've been trying to call so long. I can't believe I got in the show. It's pretty cool. Um, basically, I was just calling to ask you about Porky's. Uh, I'm like really wanting to become an actor, and I was just wondering if you were, when you were casting for that, because I would like to try to be in it. Well, uh, with Porky's, we're in the middle of writing a script. We've uh, we're working with a guy who uh, is writing the script right now, 
You certainly not up to the casting. Not up to the casting, but I do know one thing. We're going to use real teenagers. I don't want I don't want it to look like Dawson's Creek where the kids are 40 years old. Yeah, I'm 19. I don't know what age you're looking for. Well, you remember the original Porky's? Remember yeah. the kid the, the kid who, um, the horny guy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, uh-huh. I can't think of his name right now, which is so silly because I've spent months on this. Uh, Pee Wee. Right, right. And, and, and uh, Pee Wee looked like he was 35. Yeah, those kids looked old. Yeah, that yeah. always bothered me about the movie. I love the movie, but I think I think it would be cool to get some kids who actually look like kids. Yeah, well. Call me know. crazy. Are you going to, like, announce it when it's casting or what? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I mean, there'll be all the usual things. You'll put ads in the trades and all right. that. Yeah. Oh. Huh. Yeah, you know we're not up to trades? that. I don't even know if he's really an actor. Have you ever been in anything? Um, no, not really. That's hmm. what I'm trying. I didn't know if I would get, like, a main part, but at least try to, like, get into something. Got any experience? Um, uh, like I said, I'm just, like, I live in Florida, so it's not, there's not really much to do here. As as yeah, I don't think you can get that whole acting thing together in Florida. Has yeah, he gone to school saying. for acting? I'm I'm actually looking into that right now. You've been in a school play? Um, yeah, a couple, but they're just like well, that's all you need. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's good. Can well, hey. tell you where you find the acting job? You want to know something? This guy might be good. Who knows? I don't know. Cool. They got all kinds of ways of screening people. I, know, I think. I mean, I I'm pretty good at remembering lines and things like that. And I that's think all you need. Funny. That's all there is to it. You know, things like that. You ever lie to your mother? Huh? Ever lie to your mother? Uh, I've had times, yeah. That's acting. Did you convince her? That's exactly. the question. Did you get away with it? Uh, uh yeah. Uh, then you're a good actor. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Know. All right, buddy, and we'll see you in the movie. I just wanted to uh, bring up, I thought I was listening to a show one day in L.A. when I was in there, and uh, some guy brought up an idea. I don't know if you've done it already, a Tourette's dating game. I thought that would have been pretty funny if you were to do that, because I don't think anybody else would have the ball. Did he years ago? Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't uh, know if you did it. Why, you got Tourette's? Me? No, I don't have threat. Huh. I could act like I do. <laughs> All right, kid. We'll see you soon. Hey, Chauncey. Hey, how, how's it going? Yeah. By the way, you gotta get like you gotta get to auditions and all that stuff. I, you know, you know how it works, Chauncey. I don't think he does. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't have it figured out at all. You got to go to L.A. Then you got to like wait till they have these castings and you go in on them. They're like cattle calls and Ugh, it's they're hard work. They're the worst. I mean, and then then, then you go back to your waiter job. That's right. You get, a, you get another job to support your hobby acting. Right. <laughs> Chauncey, go ahead. Hey, Howard, a lot of people that you talk about on the show all have birthdays this week. You want to know their ages? Okay. Courtney Cox. I'm going to say she's... 40. Uh, no, nah, I'm going to say she's 38. Okay. Both of you are close. 39. Wow. Hey, let me ask you something. Yeah. These are their real birthdays or are some of these people lying? No, these are the real birthdays. How do you know? Because it's from the almanac. All right, go ahead. Uh, 39. Okay, uh, Lee Remini. Remember you had her on the show? Leah Remini, yeah. From King of Queens, yeah. Yes. How old do you think she is? 36. 35. 33. Mm. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mean it, Leah. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Jesus. Uh, Paul McCartney. 62? That could be right. 61. All right. Roger Ebert, the movie critic. It's a good one. You know, fat guy's always hard to tell. I'm going to yeah. say 60. Close. 61. Hmm. This he one and Paul McCartney, the same age. Hey, I'm, I'm pretty good at this. Yeah, we should go to the carnival. This one surprised me. <laughs> yeah, come here. I'll kiss you if I guess your age. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, go ahead. Singer Ann Wilson from Heart. Oh, that's a sad story. You know, they were They're on... going on tour this summer. I'm yeah. going to say 54. Ooh, God, really? Oh, good. 53. Ooh. Wow, they're that age? Chauncey yeah, Hayden, scary? 75. <laughs> but they, yeah, they were on the Tonight Show the other night, and I was sorry I didn't see them. Uh, I didn't see what they look like. Better left unseen. <laughs> Ann Wilson, that's, is that the, the fat one or the blonde? Nancy Wilson is the fat one. Oh, she's the skinny one? Yeah. I don't it's know. always been an argument. The They're skinny both- one was the blonde. Yeah, right. And that's Nancy? But the, the fat one had that stomach surgery. Oh, did she? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, I was going to ask, is she still fat? I haven't seen her. I don't her know, but it's touring. Well, Put her in Playboy. They're both the fat ones now. Oh, stop. Yeah, they, they are. One. They are a little chubby. They yeah, are. go ahead. Kathleen Turner. Oh. I'm going to say, I'm gonna say <laughs> 60. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a day over 38. <laughs> cutting a throat as we speak. 49. Oh. <laughs> he did not age well. No. <laughs> uh, yes, 49. <laughs> 
There's another one. Paula Abdul. These people all have a birthday today? Uh, all this week. All right. Paula, Paula Abdul. Abdul is 40. You, good again. 41. Thank you. Uh, Cindy Lauper. This one shocked me. 40. For, no, what am I saying? Uh, yeah, 40. 48. No. 50. <gasps> yeah. Really? I yeah. didn't know that. Boy, that's old. Yeah. Yeah, who would ever turn 50? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't announce that. You know, this this one surprised me. Frazier, you know the guy who plays the dad in Frazier, John Mahoney? Yes. Yeah. How old do you think he is? 24. <laughs> now, I'm going to say he's 57. Really? I, I thought he was much older. He's 63. Hmm. Edith, Maureen Stable in. Edith Bunker, 80. Well, you're good. 78. All right. That's Gene Stapleton. These are the people who did the show. We've never had her on. This is a good one. Meredith Baxter from Family Ties. Oh, Meredith Baxter Bierney. She's got to be 55, she right? Is. She's no longer Bierney. Bierney left the scene. And it's funny because also the one who played the dad, Michael Gross, he has a birthday on the same day, and they're the same age. Really? I'm yeah. going to say she's 52. No. 56. Oh. Ooh. I was close. Oh. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Mer- Meredith Baxter. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Two more. Barney. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> yeah. I saw. I saw on TV. Michael, go, 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 go. I know. Every time I see Linda Carter, Wonder Woman, I'm like, whoa. Oh. <laughs> I tell you that uh, Baxter Barney has big jugs. <laughs> ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> How about the Love Boat Doctor, Bernie Copel? Sixty-seven. No. 70. Oh, that's close. Yeah, that's not, not that far off. In the ballpark. Two more, and that's it. Um, the guy from Van Halen, the bass player, Michael Anthony Van Halen. 48. God, 49. Look at me. You, you are, are amazing. Do you have a list of uh, No, I got no yeah, list. I swear to God, search me. Take my <laughs> urine test. Oh, that was yesterday's show. <laughs> Last one. Uh, actress Nicole Kidman. What is I'm going to say she's... Nah, I'd say she's closer to 43. 40, 40. Uh, you're ending on a bad note. What? 36. Wow. That's close. What? We were just in the office and we were like, we can't believe that Chauncey works in entertainment because he doesn't know anything. Like, he called um, Gene Stapleton from All in the Family, Maureen Stapleton. Right. He couldn't tell the Wilson sisters apart. And Bernie Coppell, again, if you know, he called Bernie Coppell. It's like, we just can't figure out, does he know what's going on? Gary, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. I woke up 15 minutes ago. Wait, you wrote this bit. Yeah, but he gets smarter later in the day. Yeah, and you know what? Yeah, but it's so why? No, it's 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 funny. It's funny. You know it's something? Funny. You're always throwing me under the bus, and there are things I have on you that I bite my tongue. Right. Why do you do it? Oh. Why I don't you know why you do it. I'm going to stop one. doing it. Give us one thing that you bite your tongue. Well, let me take, Gary, I'm going to give you a chance to apologize to me right now, or I'm going to let my tongue loose. Let it loose. Let your tongue loose. And you know what? You take this stuff way too serious. Now, wag away. <laughs> Go ahead. Tell us something. You have nothing. Well, you know what? If I, once you I let go. Gary's squeaky clean. No, he Gary is not squeaky nothing. clean. Gary is not squeaky clean. And you know what, Gary? I owe you one from the last time I was on the show when you threw me under the bus. What did I throw you under the bus for that? What when he came in about my age and something else. Dude, dude, this is the show. You listen to the show every day. You love it. All of a sudden, you're sitting there and it's not funny. No, what do you got? Let's hear it. You go out of your way with me, though. You go out of your way. So I think it's lower just... the boom on him. Right. <clears throat> Gary, wait, Gary's clearing his throat. Hey, I'm, cl- I'm clearing my throat. Uh, I'm sorry. Gary, you may want to go into the office, but you may want to leave the room. I'm in the room. <coughs> I don't know. Do I want to do this to him? Yes, yes, you do. Gary, do you, do, do you, does he have anything on you? I, I don't know. With Chauncey, it could be anything. Like, Chauncey could be saying that, like, um, you know, one time I accidentally gave him a piece of information, which is not true. I mean, it could be anything. I have All right, no let's idea. hear what you got, because I know Gary's clean. All right, well, what, remember when Private Parts came out? Yeah. And, I and did Gary raped a guy? the guys from the film. And Gary was one of the people that uh, made the cover of Stepping Out. Gary said something in the interview that he called me up about an hour later at my office and begged me to please take it out of the interview. I have no idea what he's talking about. This is I can't wait to hear what he has to say. All right, go ahead. I said, so what do you think of Howard's acting ability? And he, he kind of trashed it. He said, Howard can't act. Howard's not an actor. People can't expect Howard to act. Howard has no acting ability. And then he called you and asked you to take it out. He called me up and said, listen, Howard, this is, I, I regret saying it. Can you do me a favor? And you are, you are you making that should, up. You should, you know what? That you should is be so hit, bad. You should be hit by a bolt of lightning for lying. Oh, well, it's time to break out the tape. 
Break, break out the tape. Break out the tape. Tomorrow? What, what time should I call in with the tape tomorrow? Five of eight. <laughs> you know what? And you know what the funny thing is, Chauncey? We've been down this road with you before, and it's never quite what you say it is. It's always exactly. You got a tape of this? I don't bring I, it I, Bring it on tomorrow. Yeah, bring it in. No, don't, don't bring it in. Call in. That's what I mean. don't, and don't get mad at me because no, you no, deserve I, this. I want to hear it. What else you got on Gary? <laughs> That's funny. I'm going to... Give me 48 hours, and I give me 24 hours, and I will give you a whole show of Gary information. All right, pull all your Gary tape. Yeah, and don't call him beforehand and ask him if it's okay. And all because you can't pronounce Bernie Coppell. This is what you No, no, about. Gary, that, this is the only, this is what broke the camel's back. <laughs> all right, all right, well, we're looking forward to the tapes tomorrow. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> okay. He has it on the same tape as the guy who played Archie Bunker, Sandra right. Day O'Connor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We'll be back right after these words. 100% entertainment. This is the only thing that television or the radio sponsor will tolerate. The Howard Stern Show. Rock Radio 92.3 K-Rock. Carney Wilson will be here. She's the uh, formerly fat chick who was in Wilson Phillips who got her stomach stapled. Uh, she's released a book on her experiences getting her stomach stapled. And now she's in Playboy. And uh, I've seen the pictures in Playboy, and I'm not impressed. I think she should be thinner. I do. I think if she got her stomach stapled, I don't understand how she could still have that kind of weight on her. The only person who seems to have gotten really thin is um, Sharon Osbourne. Yeah, I got to hand it to her. And she didn't get her stomach stapled. She got a ring put around her. She got a band, but she also got cancer. Yeah, so. that combination seems to have worked. <laughs> That's what you need to do. Yeah, yeah I was reading, uh, oh, I'm not going to lie, Gary was reading Carney Wilson's new book. Yeah. I mean, Cindy Perlman's new book. It says Carney Wilson with Cindy Perlman, probably Cindy wrote it, but it says, one of the worst times I ever happened, one of the worst times I ever had happened, doesn't that sound weird? One of the worst times I ever had happened Am I, am I, listen to this sentence. <laughs> One of the worst times I ever had happened a few weeks later in New York City. Oh, I oh. see. Whatever. One of the worst times. One I of ever the worst had. Times I ever had happened a few weeks later. Shouldn't there be a comma? I don't know. No, it's not a real comma situation. One of the worst times I ever had happened. It's a run-on no. sentence. One of the worst times I ever had happened at. Da, da, da. How are you supposed to know to take a breath there? Did you have to put, I don't know. What's the See, rule on the a comma? the subject is... I was doing grammar. One of the worst times I ever had. Well, all I know is I was doing grammar yesterday with my daughter for her homework. Mm -hmm. And they were asking you, like, which is, like, a, a pronoun and stuff. And the subject and all that. <laughs> I didn't know. You didn't know anything. I had no idea. Who remembers that crap? A oh. pronoun. You don't know what a pronoun is? Well, we had to replace, like, if I said, Robin went to the store, then I'd have to say, she, she's right. a pronoun. That's evidently. the pronoun. I never knew that until yesterday. She went to the store. store. Robin is the verb. No. She <laughs> Stop it, stop it. Oh, I'm sorry. And your problem with that sentence is it's not a typical subject. It's not a one-word subject. The subject is the worst time I ever had. One of the worst times I ever had happened a few weeks later in New York City when I agreed to go on the Howard Stern show. She agreed. She begged. <laughs> Howard had always claimed to be a fan of mine. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> I said I like that song, Wilson Phillips song. Is this a novel she wrote? Wait a minute. Is she, what? She, you're a fan of hers? I'm not a fan of hers. What does she do? <laughs> Howard had always claimed to be a fan of mine, and since he's generally, generally really nice to the people he likes, I thought it'd be a good interview, and maybe even a little challenging, knowing Howard. I even brought along my before pictures so I could show him how much weight I'd lost. And Rob, her husband, then boyfriend, was by my side throughout the whole thing, which actually turned out to be an unfortunate thing for him. As we went on the air, Howard held up my before picture, and the first words out of his mouth were anything but nice. He ranted to Rob, you were attracted to this? You made love to this? Are you crazy? Oh, dude. Are you crazy? This, wo it, this woman must have weighed 400 pounds. This guy walks in. He's a, a good-looking, slender guy. I said, come on, dude. What are you, a chubby chaser? She had to have her stomach stapled. There was a problem. Yeah, I said, wait, wait, I mean, excuse, excuse me for not seeing her inner beauty. <laughs> oh, by the way, she doesn't even have a good personality. She talks too much. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, like, excuse me, dude. 
I said to I said to Carney, don't you think it's a little odd when a guy's attracted to a five hundred pound woman? You'd be suspicious. Would right? you be a little suspicious? I mean, what? what this is you Howard must be Stern up show. To something. But no, I'll be like Larry King, like like. Oh, I'm so happy for you. Uh, he's great. After the show was over, I walked downstairs. You mean you wobbled downstairs? <laughs> well, this is after the stomach. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh, 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 wait, wait. I couldn't believe how low and mean Howard was being, but Rob carried the interview and said, I was always attracted to Carney and loved her for what was inside. Yeah, because she's so much fun. After the show was over, I walked downstairs in silence, barreled through the revolving door of the building, and stood outside bawling my eyes out. You believe Is that? Is that true? I didn't hear any reports of people seeing somebody crying on the side of the street. I continued to cry all the way to our beautiful hotel suite, and then I told Rob that I needed to take a nap to get over it. When I opened my eyes, he was standing in front of me holding two dozen roses. My honey. Now, this was what it was all about. Look, listen. I can't do an interview with somebody who weighed nine million pounds and say I'm to some dude. That. Yeah, and say to some dude, oh, come on, dude. What are you What are you doing? Yeah. Do you know how often Dana gets asked that? How she can be, you know, with... Uh, yeah, I mean, Artie gets that all the time. She, like, Dana's like, how can you be with Artie? I don't understand. <laughs> I ask it. Yeah, you ask it constantly. Right. It happens to Artie several times every day. And how many times a day does Beth get asked, how could you be with Howard Stern? I mean, come on. I mean, it's a logical question. That's all. I wasn't, I wasn't beating her up. And I don't think she was crying. She's full of it. I think that's she's a lot. She's trying to make the book more dramatic. Yeah. I think she's trying to come up with some adversity in her privileged life. I cried. I got down and I cried. Hey, Gene. Hey, what's up, Howard? What's up, buddy? Uh, not much. Listen, why are you ragging, ragging on Carney for? I'm ragging. I'm challenging her book. Uh, come on. The fatties need love, too, though. I'm giving her love. I'm just saying. Listen, who else is talking about her book, quite frankly? she got to be thrilled. Hey, listen, can I win anything? If they sell seven copies, she'll be lucky. We'll send you her book. Yeah, it's coming in the mail someday. Big Black, you're on the air. Yo, 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 what's going on? Hey, what's going on with you, dude? Hey, I'm working now. I'm going on my way to work right now. Good for you. No more homeless shelter? Oh, no, I'm still in the shelter. <laughs> but I got a job, too. Uh, oh, they're talking about Chauncey. Yeah. Yeah, all the names that he mentioned, he's got to mention the biggest one of all. You were talking this morning about the Olsen twins, and they turned 17 this week. I, I'd love to talk to you, but your phone is so bad, your cell phone, I can't even... I can't, uh, you know, right. Howard. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, I just got off the bus. Yeah, uh, all right. <laughs> I hung up on him. I, I mean, it's I a can't, nightmare. Who's going to sit and listen to that? Apparently there's no phone at the shelter. Yeah, I mean, if it was like, you know, if it was the biggest star in the world, I don't know if I'd put up with that. Right? Right. I wish we could have talked to him because I'm fascinated with his life right now. Daniel, you're on the air. Hey, Howard. How you doing? Hey. Um, I had, I, I accidentally had sex with a transsexual. Accidentally? Well, here's what happened. I don't believe there were accidents. <laughs> here's what happened. Um, it's like 2 in the morning on Saturday night. I'm real horny, so I head down to the adult superstore here in Vegas. So I'm there, I'm looking to buy a video, and this thing keeps eyeballing me. I'm like, hey, baby. It's like, hey. We start talking. We go upstairs to the arcade. We watch a few movies. She's horny. I'm horny. So we pay to get into the theater. And there we start watching this movie. Um, do, you think, do you think that there are any horny chicks hanging out in an adult video, video store? Yeah, that's you know it's got to be a dude. I, hey, I was tricked. You trick. You think there's girls girls hanging around an adult video store who are horny, who need sex from you? In Las Vegas, yes. Okay, Vegas whatever. Well, okay. <laughs> so, um, it performed fellatio on me, whatever. It. It, yeah. Meanwhile, oh, some oh, dude, oh. no, let's, let's call it the way it is. Some dude performed yeah. fellatio on you. He, pronouns, remember? And by he. the way, you sound very gay anyway. I was going to say, I am this not guy gay. doesn't know he's gay. You're gay. Dude, I'm not gay. Oh, listen to your voice. <laughs> When you called, I thought you were a tramp. Yeah, you're mincing. Uh, <laughs> I accidentally gave oral to a guy. <laughs> all right, so all right. anyway, so you're, so, all right, let me understand how you accidentally had sex with a transsexual. This dude gives you oral. Her, Sandra. Okay. Then what happens? Okay. So in the back, there's like this little pocket where you can just fit like maybe one or two people. 
So we get up and we go there, and I turn her over, you know, backwards. So she oh, can't no, say no, that. No, how, oh, how? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right. You're not whipping anything. <laughs> All right, so you you began to eat. All right, I, mean, I hate this. How come you guys can't figure out how to do this yet? You've listened to the show for 500 years. Um, all right, so you push the girl up against the wall. She, you're behind her, and then you start to have intercourse with her. Exactly. All right, go ahead. And I want to make it better for her, so I figure, hey, why don't I uh, massage her from the front? Okay. So I go towards the front, and there's a, a bulge in her pants. Uh, wait a second, wait a second. You I said you got behind her. Yes. And you began to have sex with her. Yes. So I so go for you, it. Oh, I see. Okay, so you, so you pull down her, her pants, his pants. No, her, she had a mini skirt. Sorry. Yeah, you pull it up. I pull it up. And, and you felt the bulge. What's that? You yes, felt the bulge. bulge. And I said, hold on, something ain't right. <laughs> oh, oh, that's all you said? <laughs> <laughs> In my mind, I said something Hold on. Right. <laughs> Who do so you say that to? It. I looked at Sandra, and I'm like, and she's like, <gasps> so I finished up. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, forget it. That's no accident. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. So where did you, you, you use the butt? Yes. You had anal. Of course you did. Of course. Oh, you had anal. Well, yeah. that's all he could have. No, 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 no. See, <laughs> I thought the dude was like getting ready for sex and he felt the bulge and he got out of there. no, no, no. no. No, you no, gave no, some dude. Up. You gave some dude anal. Sandra. Yeah, Sandra. <laughs> She's a woman by accident, and uh, so I finished up. And at this point, I'm like freaking scared. I'm like, oh my god, what did I just do? And my reaction was to punch her in the back of the head, and then I just ran out of there and left. You didn't punch her. Yeah, in the back of the head. Oh, you. You did. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's so wrong. Because you know what, dude? First of all, you're punching her because you're gay. You knew, you knew it was a dude, and you're standing there, and you're just mad at yourself because you're gay. I'm not gay. Yeah, okay. You Keep just telling had sex with a man, but you're not gay. And I like how you punched him. <laughs> you're a man. That's a man, baby. You still finished even after you knew. Plus. It only took two seconds. Yeah, a heterosexual work. guy wouldn't have but sat. But he started in the wrong Homo place. says what? Of course. You're gay, dude. Dude, I'm not gay. All right. Yeah. Keep telling yourself that while you're having sex with men. Yeah. When you feel Whoa. that bulge, you know to you're just... You're out of there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How well, could you go on? Well, now I know not to go to the superstore at 2 in the morning when I'm horny. Yeah, and by the way, listen to your voice. Right. You sound as gay as gay can be. <laughs> the superstore when I'm horny. <laughs> Who were you rooting Hello, for when you watched the Tonys? I know not to go to the superstar. Dude, you know what, man? You'd be a lot happy if you just sort of come out of the closet and embrace your gayness. <laughs> well, sometimes I like, I mean, I don't know if it's gay or not. I don't know if Beth does to, to, to you, but um, you ever on top of her imaginary position and she like uh, sticks her finger back there? Yeah. And you know what I do? I clench up. Stupid. Hey, Get that's a man's here. spot. Uh, that guy's so gay. He is. <laughs> Let me see if you can relate to this. Does your girlfriend have a penis? <laughs> I'm gay. I'm a homo. I like guys. <laughs> right. He's just not ready to admit it to himself. Right. That's all. All right. Uh, Accidentally. Uh, we're talking about that TV show, Kids Who Are Rich and Stuff. Yeah. Little Romeo is on there. Little Romeo is like 13, and he's a, he's a millionaire, I and guess. And he's Master P's son, I guess. Master P's son, whoever Master P is. Evidently, Master P's a big deal. Yeah, he's a multi-millionaire as well. So they're interviewing the kid, and he's talking about he's got a Jaguar, custom-made. Even his father, Master P, goes, the kid doesn't even drive. I don't even right. know. What's, what's he doing with this thing? He doesn't know what his son is. For this car right here, I got this custom-made Romeo style. TV, DVD, navigation system. Romeo got cars, man. Romeo got, I'm like, he can't even drive. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. DVD. That's out of control. Yo, check this out right here. I got like a little tape deck or something. Can you imagine? He's got a, he's got a Jaguar. Jaguar. It's custom-made. Yeah. <laughs> Romeo style. I got a Romeo style, understand? Yo. What's that? Romeo style.
Wow. Um, I got a Mr. Skin. All right. Let's see if there's any skin in the movies. All right. This is Mr. Skin from MrSkin.com with all the skin folk from the latest movies. The big movie hitting theaters this weekend is Hollywood Homicide starring Harrison Ford and Josh Hartnett. It could also be called Dumb and Dumberer, but that title's already taken by the other PG-13 release this week. There's not so much as a nip slip in either flick, and if this keeps up, I'm only going to get hornier and hornierer. Nude on DVD this week is the frat comedy Old School, a boobapalooza of anonymous knockridge. My favorite scene is the KY Jelly wrestling match where you get to see the glazed donuts of hot blonde Lisa Donats. Mmm, donuts. What's wrong with him? <laughs> He's sick. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. My choice for breast picture of 2002 finally arrives on DVD this week. Frida starring Latin lust bomb Selma Hayek as bisexual Mexican painter Frida Kahlo. Selma bears her sombrero-sized chest burritos a bunch and even has a lesbo scene, muy caliente. And if you el pause, I'm pretty sure you can even see Taco Bellage. I'm Senior <laughs> Skin from MrSkin.com. Fast forwarding to the bueno parts. All right. Frida. I wasn't going to get that one, but I would check out a lesbian scene. Absolutely. Just go to MrSkin.com. The guy just cuts away all the boring stuff and gets right to the good stuff. Yeah, because that's a long movie. You don't want to necessarily get caught up Yeah, it's that. long and boring, and you got to, like, learn stuff. <laughs> and you know what? When I'm learning stuff, I don't get that horny. <laughs> oh, what a nightmare that sounds like. But, uh, hey, Artie, your uh, movie and the uh, yeah. Mr. Skin Minister. Well, I'll tell you, there's there's good old fashioned nudity in old school, man. Here, there's a uh, a Russian teenager, 16 years old. She's a tennis sensation. Her name is Maria Sharapova. Oh, wonderful! I Sharapova. think <laughs> <laughs> there's too many syllables. Sharapova, I think, and. Um, Evidently, you remember how Monica Sells used to grunt during a tennis match? Yeah. Well, this chick grunts so... This is Monica Sells. I don't have this new chick, but this chick grunts so loud that they they took away points, I think. Really? Yeah. Under it, it, what The other players were just complaining so much that um, she was penalized a point for excessive grunting. Mm. And, you know, you know, this grunting thing is such a bunch of crap. I mean... I see professional football players who don't grunt. I see basketball players who don't grunt. I see boxers don't grunt when they're boxing. Why would you have to go, oh? But there's a lot of that in the game at this point. It's done for um, to, to, to distract the other players, I feel. But even guys do it. Monica Sellis. She's uh, older and mm. not doing as well. Why don't you just bark like a dog? I mean, she's almost there. People used to make a big deal about it when she first started, but we've sort of gotten used to her, and now a lot of people. I heard Andre Agassi grunting. <laughs> because he has a vagina. First of all, tennis has to get over itself. You can't make any noise in a tennis match. Only they can make noise. Yeah. Mitch, go ahead. You're on the air. Hey, you know, there was that commercial for Gary Busey's new show uh, on the commercial break. It made me think, you know, this past week they aired on E! the Gary Busey episode where you had to wrestle that dude? Yeah. Hey, why is it if you've established that those scrolls are annoying, why do they air them on the second show? I don't get that. Why not just I don't know. enjoy those shows? It's a power play? or I, I mean, I, I genuinely believe the people at E! believe that the scrolling across these this ridiculous news of theirs somehow gives them imaging, like you can tune into E! at any time and get show business news. The problem is they're presenting shows that aren't news shows. A talk show or where someone something is visual, when you start scrolling across the bottom, it you know, it destroys what you're presenting. The main show gets taken away from. Their That's theory so true. I mean they're hot chicks on that show sometimes and I find right. myself distracted because I'm reading scrolls. Meanwhile there's there's some hot broad on this. 
Because your eye goes to a scroll. You, you We're trained to think that there's something important happening if there's a like scroll. a dopey trained monkey. It pisses me off. And then you got to sit there and have an argument with yourself. I'm not going to stare at the scroll. I'm going to stare right, at the screen. Distract it's, myself. It's, it's just the dumb... It's like if during Friends, NBC started running a news feed. I mean, what... what? There's such a sickness there. I can't even tell you. So when you finally point this out, you think someone would say, you know, you're right. Maybe on some shows like our news show, our E! News, we'll run a scroll. But it becomes a pissing match between well, you know, people. I can understand you have so many battles. Like I can understand you throwing your hands up in the air. Hey, can you ask Robin Rosinski, how much is he saving? I love Stump the Bowie on the radio, but it doesn't translate on, on a TV show because you don't hear the music. How much would they have to pay? I can't believe it's that much. There's a, there is a, a huge problem with our show in that we run these things in perpetuity. So every time we'd run it, we'd have to get clearances and all that kind of stuff. I happen to know it's a huge problem. It's not just the money. It's not a money issue. Mm, if it was a one-shot money deal, they'd do it. And hey, they, I have a theory. You know those white cubes that already see? I think that's cake frosting. All right. Could be. That's funny. Could be. That's true. Um, thank you. Okay, one more thing. Artie, is it true that you once got suspended from your softball league for stuffing your bat with mozzarella? All right, thank you. Okay. Jesus. Wow. That guy would be on that new comedy I show. I think that's really <laughs> disgusting. Yeah, I think he could be the last comic standing. Oddly enough, that is true, though. Yeah. Um, let's go to Mike. Mike, go ahead. Good All right, Mike, thank you. Yo, Howard. Morning. How are you, buddy? Hey now, listen. I got uh, I got a question for you. I'm getting married soon, like in a week and a half, and I'm going to be a father and stuff like that. I'm really nervous about the whole situation. Is there any advice you got? Any uh, any heads up you can give me? Or how old are you? I'm 28. And you're going to be a dad at the same time you get married? Yeah. I actually, see. I, actually, I proposed to my uh, my fiance at Rockefeller Center, and then uh, we found out about a month and a half later that she was pregnant. Well, I have no advice other than you should really, to be a good father, you got to either go into therapy so you don't lay crap on your kids that you were given, or uh, if you can't do that, I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't have any advice. I don't know how you... How do you know he needs that? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. He sounds like a disturbed guy. That's why I'm thinking. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, I'm just quite disturbed. Sound of his voice. Yeah, I mean, I'm just assuming he's disturbed. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I think that uh, to be a good father, you got to be, you got to put your own ego aside. Every time you feel like a child and you need the attention or it's your issue, you got you got to focus on your kid. Does that make any sense? Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. I don't know if every every man goes through this, but I'm having a, quite a tough time as far as the stress and, and, and preparing for the wedding and preparing for the baby. Well, because you're probably not ready. You're 28 you're years old. way too much. Yeah, I mean, to get married is a major stress. They say the biggest stress in your life is getting married, moving, a new job, getting fired from your job, or a death. And marriage might be right up number one with death so you're taking on a huge thing then you're dealing with suddenly going from being a kid to now taking care of a kid having to support a kid getting life insurance health insurance and what do you do for a living uh i drive a truck yeah well look yeah you you should be worried you should be stressed out hey i make pretty good money and i got great benefits you know what i mean so, it's 28 uh, you should be having fun like Getting, uh, giving some guy anal in a movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> On a Saturday night. <laughs> On a Saturday night when you're horny. Uh, I don't know. You know, I think you're taking on a lot, but you're, you're a good man in that you're saying, well, gee, how am I going to be a good father? It's yeah, a mean, tough it's a job. Huge responsibility. I mean, I'm, I'm a little nervous about it. Not, I mean, uh, I'm definitely looking forward to it. You know what I mean? Sometimes you got to learn to, like, uh, you know, like, like your kids will be doing something that irritates you, and and and, and you know they're wrong. But sometimes even you gotta, you gotta, like not yell at them and stuff. It's hard. It's hard. You know, you want to straighten them out, and then you can't. You gotta, you know, they gotta learn for themselves. You can't impose who you are on them. You know what exactly. I mean? 
I mean, I've spoken to a bunch of my friends that have kids and stuff, and they say, you know, at times they yell at their kids and stuff like that, and then five minutes later they see their face and they feel bad. And, All I can tell you, you know is don't I mean? bring them up in a black neighborhood if you're a white person. <laughs> That's one thing I learned life. growing up. And don't, and don't, you know, yell at them and try and every minute micromanage them. Let them be their own people. They're yeah. people. And that that yeah. takes a while to figure out that they're really not you. And they're really not looking to be you. They're trying to figure out who they are. Right, you gotta give them and just realize you're going to screw it up anyway. Yeah. And even after all of that, they'll all be messed up. <laughs> and so will you. And it's all a waste and of time. And the marriage won't work. Every right. Day. You'll be divorced. <laughs> I mean, it, this is how it happens, man. Uh, but you're not even saying to him, get a prenup. Has he done anything like that? Prenup? I don't have nothing to split. Well, that's the problem. You think you don't have anything to split. But what happens, you're a hard-working guy. Driving a truck is hard work. Yes. You know, let's, let's, let's knock off the nonsense. Certainly is. You know, yeah, driving a truck is hard. And you got to take no dose. You gotta, I mean, you don't, you don't, God only knows what this guy's doing. <laughs> He's never going to be home. His wife's going to be banging somebody else in a couple of years. And you know what? Whatever money you manage to save, let's say you put it into a house. I'm glad you're so positive about my relationship. Well, that house. bitch is going to take everything. <laughs> and you know what? She's yeah. going to have your house. She's going to have your stupid house, the one thing you owned. <laughs> you know what? If, my advice is I'd get in your truck and drive off a bridge. <laughs> you're doomed. That's for the bridge and then drive off. <laughs> it's just that it's not going to, you know, you're going to get horny on the road. Your wife's not going to be. I've seen wives who are truck drivers who actually, like, go around with their man in the oh, truck. Oh, yeah, they live in the truck with They them. live in the truck with the baby and the whole thing. That'll make you <laughs> mental, too. And. You're going to end up cheating. So, yeah, Robin's right about the um, prenup. You should definitely do it. You need it more than, than a rich guy. Yeah, maybe I'll consider how it. Much you, sure how much do you clear a year? 50, 60? Yeah, I, I, I clear about uh, about 48. Okay. 48,000. So, when you, you know, you got a house? Yep. All right. You own it? I mean, you know, it's your house? Yeah, my house. All right. Dude, you get a divorce, that house is gone. You had that house before you met her. You're driving a goddamn truck. What does she do all day? Uh, she's uh, she's a massage therapist, actually. Yeah, well, okay. Well, at least she's working. I throw that out the window, though. She's having a baby. Yeah, she's not going to work. <laughs> yeah, she says she wants to stay home for the first year of the baby. And stuff well, that's like right. That. She should. And then she extends. <laughs> Wait, you'll see. They all say they want to stay home the first year, and then they, then they never leave. <laughs> Sir, we're not trying to be negative, but if you're lucky, you'll catch SARS. <laughs> well, she's going to own everything, man. And you know what's sad? You're going to end up living in a little, like, like it'll be a two-room house. You'll have the basement, and you'll have a hot plate. And he'll still be on that truck yeah. as much as he ever was, and if not more. And you'll get to see your kid once a week or twice a week because you got to work. And, and then, and then uh, you know... Your wife will be the hero. Because she's home with the kids. Of course she's home with them. She don't have to work. And bad mouthing you. And bad mouthing you and telling me <laughs> Daddy suck. Daddy's driving through Utah right now on no dose because yeah. he doesn't like you. Daddy's not with you because he doesn't like doesn't like Daddy would love to be home. Daddy's gotta work. Right now Daddy's trying to check into a motel in Muncie to get an hour of sleep tonight because he hates you. I would get a prenup. Yeah, I think I'm definitely going to consider it anyway. Yeah, just say, hey, listen, you know, i got to be protected here. I don't want to end up with a hot plate. I want my house. I, I had the house before I met you. Yeah, it really should be an even split. Hmm. Even? At least. Let her drive a gonna, truck. She's not even, he's not going to get out at the rate he's going. He's not even going to get that. Now, you're, you're finished. <laughs> at 48, you'll be lucky if you clear 20 for the rest of your life. <laughs> She's oh, get... my God. Yeah, what do you think goes on, dude? You don't read the paper? You don't listen he to this show? He doesn't understand that right now he's living on 48. Yeah, he's living on 48. And, and then now, when his wife takes half. Yeah, he's going to be, you know, supporting everybody on that. And then when he leaves, they're going to keep the majority. Have you managed to save any money? Yeah, I got a few bucks. What do you got in savings? Uh, about 15. Yeah, that's gone. She's going to take that. Hey, listen, let me ask you a question. Is there, what's the percentage of successful marriages and successful upbringings? I'll tell you exactly. Like that? that's, that's definitely possible. 60% of the marriages, I'm going to answer your question right now. It's going to shock you. 60% of marriages end in divorce. The rest of them, the dudes and the wives are miserable for the most part. So I would say 0% is successful. No, no, no. There's like one, one. maybe. Not like a percent, just one. One marriage. <laughs> my parents. 
But sir, there's a there's a couple, but there's very few marriages. You know what? And I don't care who you marry. It's just too. You know, who are you friends with from high school? Uh, nobody. Exactly. So the person you meet now, you think you'd want to be friends with them in ten years? You get bored, or you just change. I try to explain divorce to my kids. I go. I'll say to my daughter in college, I go, "Who are you friends with from when you were ten? Very few people. Right. You change. Oh, well, people move on. People they move. That's on. right. That's yeah. right. But you're going to be out on the road. Your wife's going to be at home developing her own interests. Going to look up one day and go, "Who am I married to? Yeah, I'm married to a truck driver. <laughs> She's been home reading books. She <laughs> thinks she should be married to Deepak Chopra and Doctor Phil." <laughs> Take it out of his mug. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, he is not good for you. That's right. She'll be sitting at home in her Dr. Phil scrubs. Yeah, and it's just, that's just like my husband. Dr. Phil will be telling some house. He's got to spend time with you. He's got to be more understanding and make romance and make a date with you every Friday night. And you're like, and he's got to keep uh, that date. I drive a truck. I'm exhausted. <laughs> is he married to you or a truck? Yeah, and you know what, Dr. Phil? Give me that goddamn film mug. I'm going to smash it right now on the air. Yeah, do it. Do it. I can't even destroy can't it. Break it? Uh, it doesn't destroy. It won't die. It won't die, the Dr. Phil mug. What part of you thinks that as a lady you should have to put up with his truck driving? Friday night he should be taking you out. He should make a date, come to you, smell good, shower, bathe, whatever he's got to do. And, and why shouldn't you have that? You know why? Because we work, you loudmouth, bald bastard traitor. Thank you. He doesn't care about you. He hates you. Yeah, well, excuse me. I drive a truck all week so so that I can feed your fat ass. He doesn't deserve <laughs> you. God damn it. Don't get married, man. Oh, he's going to have a baby. He's already cooked. <sighs> he did Dude. it. Dude, the marriage is a week from this Saturday, the wedding. So. you got to pull out. I don't like what's going on. <laughs> Put that truck in reverse. I don't like her. I don't like her attitude. I don't. I've had it with her. <laughs> How much did you spend on the ring? You could do better. How much did you spend on the ring? 4000 oh. Wow. oh, man. Jeez. Guy makes 48000 You know what he clears after? What do you clear after taxes? Uh, I don't know. Probably about... Uh, Thirty-six or something. Yeah. Four thousand went to a ring. Four G's for this frau. I mean, I hustle too. I do some side work. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, do what I, got. Oh, I know you do. I admire you. We know you I hustle. Take, I take care of my kids. Yeah. <laughs> no, you will be. You will. <laughs> hey, listen, Howard. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I know a bunch of people have been calling you up for a gift and stuff like that this morning, and maybe. maybe I'm maybe not giving it to you because half is it going to your wife. I would have given you 500 bucks, but 250 is already down the drain. I promise I won't give it to her, dude. No, you got to have to. No, she won't know about it. I keep it. All right, you won $500 cash courtesy of Wes Craven's They. You're the man, Howard. Written by Brendan William Hood and directed by Robert Harmon. Why is that important? Why is it Wes Craven's They? He sounds like he didn't do a goddamn thing. Available everywhere on video and DVD now. 500 bucks for you. Thanks, Howard. I appreciate it. Bye -bye. All right. Hold on to it. Thank you. Jesus, what a depressing call that was. Yeah, he called me too late. <laughs> Started out good. I was giving him father advice. <laughs> but he called too late. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, Daryl Hammond. Uh, is he still, he's not on Saturday Night Live anymore, is he? I think he yeah. is. Absolutely. Yeah, he's definitely there. We haven't watched Saturday Night Live in, I think, two seasons. I haven't even seen it. Uh, the only episode I watched all the way through was the one with um, that guy from The Deer Hunter. Hmm. What's his name? Christopher Walken? Yeah, he was great. Daryl's going to come in here uh, later on, do that, the news with us. Daryl's always one of the greatest guys on that show, though. Does yeah, that great is. Jay Leno impression. Yeah, he's really good. Hope he does his impressions and doesn't like get all wanting to be Daryl Hammond. <laughs> well, he's good no, either he way. He always uh, comes in and does voices for us. All right. I like, uh, what does he do? He does He does Dr. Phil, I think. He does Leno. He does Dr. Phil. He does a great Ted Koppel. And which president did he do? Phil Donahue uh, and Bill Clinton. Yeah. Really good Bill Clinton. Yeah. A funny guy. Question is, would we be in better hands? Are we in better hands with George Bush or Bill Clinton? Is the country in better in better shape? Are we better taken care of with which president? I don't think Bill Clinton could have handled nine yeah. eleven. I think I don't think he ever would have done what George Bush did. I don't think he would have gone into Afghanistan. I don't think he would have gone into uh, Iraq. Uh, I'll say George Bush. 
I hate to say it. Never thought I would say it. But uh, he's done a good job. Yeah, people are doing polls about that stuff right now. I mean, in this this is a very kooky time we're in right now. Anything post nine eleven is a whole new. We need a we need a cowboy road warrior. <laughs> yep. We need a guy trying to prove something. You know what I mean? We need a maniac. Not some guy who can sit back and think. Yeah, we need a guy who overreacts to stuff <laughs> like me. You need that guy who's drunk in a bar, or when some little guy gets out of line, he starts beating him up, and he starts looking at his friends, going, "What are you looking at?" You need next. a guy. We need You're a guy. Next. We need a guy who gets a call this radio show. Howard, I don't like the show anymore. You suck. I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm going to. I, if you ever call here again, I'm gonna hunt you down with a bow and arrow. You and your family. Kill you, your children, your parents, and your grandparents. That's what we need. Irrational stuff. <laughs> yeah. What is it, Scotty? Hello. Hey. Hey, how's it going, man? Hey, brother. What's What's happening? You are. <laughs> is it Howard? Yes. Hey, Howard. Um, you're a Nectar fan, right? You remember Nectar? <sighs> I don't know. Okay, I gotta go. No, it, wait, wait. No, I want to give you a DVD, man. You're always giving. All right. All right, we, the country agrees with you. They think that the President Bush administration is running us, the country better than Bill Clinton's did. There you go. Jose, you're on the air. Howard, you're my hero. All right. Uh, Howard, I just want to say a couple of things. Um, listen, this guy that was there yesterday uh, saying he was a doctor that collected your urine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's really not a doctor. You know, anybody can do that job. It's just a, a little course in phlebotomy. No, I know that guy was a doctor. He he was a doctor in the Philippines. He was just here to collect the urine for my insurance. Right. He also said he did physicals. He said he did... Uh, he draws I, blood. I did that kind of work. What you do is you set up the appointments with the uh, clients. You go over and the physical consists of a blood pressure. Uh, yes, I know. I, I know. I did a, I did a, uh, a physical already with, a do with my doctor. Right. And then but I had to give urine. Where, that's where your urine should be with your doctor, not some guy coming over. He says DNA in urine. And now I don't care. I don't even care. You know what? He, he was a doctor in the Philippines, which makes him a witch doctor here in the United States. <laughs> but I don't even Correct. care. Any, anyone who's a doctor in a third world country would have it made. There's no reason for them to leave, uh, first of all. Second of all, can I say something else? Uh, no, because he, this first, <laughs> the guy was a nice guy. came in. He collected the urine. He's a nice guy. He's a doctor over in the Philippines. Well... He was just collecting urine, dude. He, he, he wasn't here to bother anyone. I thought he said he had a license here. No. He's, he's a, got a... He, he, I don't know what he's... It's a driver's license. It's a driver's license. Same license you got. He's a doctor in the Philippines. And Howard. <laughs> yeah. Howard, why are you putting down divorce so much? You know, I've been listening to you from way putting back down when. divorce. He's very forced. Divorce is devastating. No, no. Marriage, That's marriage, why. marriage. Why am I you putting know. it down? Yeah. You know, marriage is the hardest thing that anyone yeah. in, in life would... That's have right. To do. So and that's why too many people just do it in their 20s. They don't even know what it is. It's right. not for everybody. But, but how would your analogy about who do you know from high school that you still know? Yes. I mean, that has has nothing uh, to it. I see. Okay. Only, only special people do you stay in contact with. Well, sometimes they're not so special. Yeah. How, right. Who says you married a special person? Sometimes your judgment isn't that, that together. Sometimes right. you... Look, come on. Get out of here. Uh, Howard. You enjoy being married? I've been married 22 years. That's not you, what he asked you. Do you enjoy it? Uh, absolutely. You sound gay to me. <laughs> you do? I would have sworn this guy was gay. No, yeah. but my thing is, why when you ask somebody if they're, uh, they enjoy their marriage, they tell you how many years they've done it? Exactly. Because they don't enjoy they it. They can't ever answer that question. Because they're counting. No, no. Uh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And uh, I, I got to go. Uh, good. I'm glad you're the one guy who's happy. Uh, Everyone I meet seems to be miserable. Hey, Thank Howard. You. Yeah. Uh, Howard, my, the best years of your show was used to be when Allison used to come on and you used to talk. Absolutely. I love Allison. I still love Allison. She's the greatest woman but in the world. But those were the best years of the show. Why are you still here? Yeah. You got to leave the show. That's oh. what, we, Me and you got to get a divorce. Howard, you're the man. <laughs> right. you're the man. Right. I got to get off the phone with this guy. This is what happens when I walk down the street. I get trapped with people like this. <laughs> you the man. I've been married for several years. It's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, did you ever say, you're a more feminine sounding man? Uh, yes. Yeah, the guy who had sex in the uh, video store. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really? Like, yeah. By accident, well, I People had who don't know they're gay. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah, right. I, I got to take a break. That guy was a doctor in the Philippines, which makes him a waiter here. Whatever. 
I had no problem with the guy collecting my urine. He was a nice guy. All right. We're going to be back right after these words. This is Howard Stern. Howard Stern on the air. Ready? And. Look who joins us today. Daryl Hammond, who is going to be at Caroline's yeah. tonight through Sunday. I guess you had to put together a little stand-up act for that, or you just can't just stand up there. and. Yeah, you got to tell a couple of jokes. You can't just have the audience ask questions? No, no, no. no I what, you got an hour in you or what? Yeah, yeah, about an hour. You do a lot of the voices? Uh, as many as I can get in. You got to put in a little bit of stand-up, too, a little, uh, because... It Observational doesn't... humor? You got to do a little bit of that. Do you work know. dirty or do you do all no, Sometimes I work dirty. I mean, Say the second... S word, F. F word. Yeah, second shows are a little blue. Yeah, yeah. that's good. I like that. Yeah. I'm an adult. I want to hear F word. Yeah. I'm sick of, like, Seinfeld. He's going uh, to prove how good he can be without the F word. You know what? I like the F word. Yeah. Well, I'm not that good. You don't show your penis or anything. No, you don't go crazy. No, no. No, I don't show the penis. I tried to stand up once. 30 seconds in, I had to show my penis. It was, uh, you know, I mean, I had nothing to say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm more, more of a broadcast. Well, you can tell if I'm bombing by how quickly I jump into Clinton. You know? Yeah. Because you go into Clinton, it's automatic laughs. Yeah. yeah. Well, are you doing a lot of Hillary Clinton, like Bill Clinton stuff? <sighs> yeah. I, I, yeah. I mean, it's, you know. Isn't it true everybody thinks they can do Clinton? Yes. Even I think I can do you know, it. Yeah, you think you, you do it. I yeah, think but, I do it. Yeah, but you kind of <laughs> can. Yeah, 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 it's just that. <laughs> I started in, I ended up doing whatever anyone else is doing now. I hear it so much. <laughs> you don't even show what he sounds like anymore. I don't even remember. So here's, here's my Clinton. Okay, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah, it's Hillary's in the paper again. Today. Well, Hillary's in the paper because... Yeah, they know... Well, you know, there's a lot of reasons. I mean, she said that she was attracted to Bill Clinton's hands. And I said, well, how could you be attracted to the hands that squeezed Monica Lewinsky? Yeah. And, and probably put his fingers in her dirty, you dirty know, place. Kissed, you know I kissed her, right? You kissed, kissed Hillary? Hillary? Uh, no, Monica. You did? Yeah, on our show one time. Oh, yeah, right, right. You were playing Bill Clinton, right? Yeah, that was a trip. Uh, was it good? Well, I just don't know how to categorize it. She's very fat. Uh, she, Does I that can, turn you on? It's like, it's like how do, I don't know. I mean, it's like, it was like acid. It was like LSD. It was like, it's like, how do you, cat, it's like famous, very famous face. Right. And, and, you know, all that it's famous for. And it's like coming towards yours. What happens to you? <laughs> like, do you rehearse with her the kiss? Yeah, you rehearse it. So and you, you had to did kiss you, her several times? Yeah. I, I know, it, like, when you do a love scene in a movie, actors always say, well, you know, it doesn't make a difference. It's acting, and it's not even sexual. But I found, in my movie, it was very sexual. I was getting turned on. I had a full arousal when I was kissing Mary and the girl in the bathtub. When I was with... I was fully aroused. Uh, when you were I kissing would, Monica Lewinsky, yeah, yeah. were I, you getting into it? No, it was just... I w it was just the, the theater of it. It was just that it was Monica. It but was do just... you go so into Bill Clinton, you're like... Do you tongue her? <laughs> no, it was just a famous face and, and that fa all that's, you know, famous for... And it's like coming towards yours. Hmm. And you're like... It's like... You know, <laughs> did you squeeze her fat? You guess about right here, you're here. Surprise! You know? <laughs> so did you go to our room and rehearse kissing? Yeah, I saw her in a towel. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. That would be frightening. Yeah. I thought she was hot. You did? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Do you think she wanted you? No. No, I think she was selling books. Right. Yeah, no way. But you would have banged her if you could. Well, you're married, right? Yeah, sort of. I think at that time I was... <laughs> at that time we were separated, so I would have... I, I certainly, certainly would have. Marriage doesn't work, right? Never. He's married, separated, well, then gets back together. Well, where is he now? I mean, I go, it's hard to tell. Are you separated still? Or are you you're back separated together? right now. It's, it's, we're not living in the same place because I just don't live well with, it's the, with people. You want to live on your own? Well, you know what? Do you live with your, your girlfriend? No, we have separate apartments. Yeah, because it's, it's like the, you get in and there's like every room has like a rule. Yeah. The bathroom and... She just would get so mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like you know, there's so like the it's like the hole in her mouth isn't um, big enough, you know, for all the topics that come out at one time. Like <laughs> 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 start being. Well, let me see. No, no, she started yelling at me. It's like being yelled at by an auctioneer. Like, yeah. like Daryl, damn it! When I doubt I'll be able to see you an hour floor. <laughs> do you? Do you? <laughs> how do you work it though? You're separated now. In other words, you live in separate places. Mm -hmm. But you like date. You date each other. I, I can't categorize. I don't know. We talked every day for 15 years. We love each other. We keep trying. I don't know. You got a kid? Yeah. Yeah, see, yeah. that's it. Yeah. So do you date any of the women? No, not now. That's what just... I'm saying. They're still trying, I guess. Yeah. I wow. don't know. What am I going to do? 
You love her. You can't help it. You do love your wife. Yeah, sure. You just can't live with her. I can't live in the house with her, babe. Hey, that, can't do that, it. <laughs> does she date anyone? No. So, so you're really not separate. You just have separate living quarters. Oh, yeah, we're not really separated now. No. <laughs> I can't figure you out. But how does he tell if they're separated? Huh? <laughs> like, do you, do you split up your money and stuff? I mean, do you mm. still support her? Or? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, actually, she manages my money, so I... <laughs> oh, so you're lucky to get some. She's the only honest person. I, I mean, the person I uh, totally honest I yeah. can trust. But How far know. away does she live? That sounds interesting. Downtown. I live uptown. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. There's a whole island between the two of yeah. them. Yeah. You live in Harlem. She has a place at the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> so when do you get together, like? I mean, do you do it still and everything? Uh, yeah, sure. When do you get together? Um, uh, Once a week. A week. I try to see you know the baby every day, the my daughter every day if I can, uh -huh. and then you get real tired and you go to bed. And, you know, I mean, we, like four or five days a week we try. And do you date each other? Yeah. No. No. Do you ever go to a movie with her? Or? Yeah, I mean, occasionally you do something no. like that, but it, it's I find it hard to have have a, a child, and it's a lot of work. Yeah. I mean, I just don't... I mean, all I do is try hard, and it seems to work out okay. I'm trying hard for a guy is real hard. Yeah. yeah. The guys aren't meant to be mothering. Yeah, always yeah. there was a guy who, who once said, you know, when, when you tell... I guess it's that Dr. Gray or Mars and Venus. When you say... You complain to a guy that he's not doing enough. He's already doing all he can. Yeah, I feel like a it's hero. A real knock. I, I did this whole like party for my ten year old with five kids. I'm still congratulating myself. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, like I'm like, wow, you should see what I did. That I was had... Herculean. <clears throat> yeah, you know, it yeah. really is. It's like they like women can even have a baby and don't even brag about that. I mean, it's like we fix a doorknob. You know, it's like we can go rest for the rest yeah. of the day. Drinks are on the house. <laughs> I know. We, even with my boyfriend, you know, he does any little thing. He's like another miracle. <laughs> it's like a miracle. That's right. Done. We think we'll turn on the tube and see, you know, <laughs> Coppel doing a report on him. <laughs> so what? Uh, so Gary told me that you had to make a tape for Katie Kirk when she hosted the Tonight Show. Uh, yeah, I did. A, like, What's a, that all about? An instructional video on how Jay does the monologue, how to get through it, and all that. <laughs> really? You, you did that for her, but you didn't air it. I, I don't know if she did or not. I think it was for the Today Show, and I didn't hear anything about it, so maybe it was Oh, I see. So you pretend to be... You, you... I just basically show how Jay does every monologue. How I, does Jay do every monologue? Well, first you come out, and the audience the cheers, and then it starts to die down, and you go... And it's just as it's dying down, you go... <clears throat> you go, calm down, calm down. We didn't, think, we didn't come in and have fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's his stock line. Sure. And then uh, it, start, it finally start, dies down, so he starts going, well, that's very exciting. Actually, even more exciting. You know about that? This is true. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'm not making this up. Right? There's a lot of that for a while. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> we don't see his robot, you know, with the lawnmower. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, with the line. No, barely see is going to start telling McDonald's hamburgers, which are, ooh, we're going to be done. Ooh. <laughs> And then it's like, it's like, I can see it now. I'll take a quarter pound of fries. What did you throw in a pair of underwear to home and make nuggets? Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm making this up. And then you got to get to the next joke. Right. So you go, let's see what else is happening. Oh, here's something interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's something interesting. You know, Michael Jackson got a, a, another kid. That's true. I, read, I mean, I read it. It wasn't in the newspapers or anything. It was on one of those Amber Alert warning signs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm not making this up. What else? It's a lot of no, 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 I'm not making this up. No, 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 yeah, yeah. He's got to let you know it's true. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is true. So you're saying it's an easy job, really, once you get it down. I don't know. I'm saying he's he he's got a thing. He's got a whole pattern, and There's he works pattern. it every night. And he works it. I think so. And you've got it figured out. That's right. You broke the code. It's a formula. That's when right. you do a gig like Caroline's, mm -hmm. why not just go there and be Jay Leno and show people how it's done? It, you know, I mean, why not? Just do the whole monologue that way? Yeah. Sure. It'd be easy. Yeah, Wouldn't have to work hard. He's work. <laughs> just do this joke Here's how I do it. Just do the, is say you're Jay Leno and charge way more money to go to like a corporate gig or something. Well, it's more uh, a little more uh, jokey joke on the Tonight Show, I think, than his stand-up. Right? No, yeah. absolutely. Like, yeah. Like, so, do, do people like, keep asking you how much longer you're going to be on Saturday Night Live? Like, is I, that your standard question? Because you've been there a while. I think that that they they basically don't even think I'm on. Yeah, I didn't think you were on yeah, anymore. It, it's sort of like it's a weird scene. It's like um, it's almost like being a retainer. Do you want? Do you want to leave? I wanted the money. And, right. and Why I, leave? I, I, I like it that they pay me really well. And Do they? I heard they don't pay well. They've been paying me good. Really? And I, and I don't understand it because they don't, they don't really get used as much anymore. We're not doing that much political humor. 
Hmm. You know, and that's basically what they hired me for. So you get that paycheck. Get that paycheck. You got to go there every day? Uh, no. You just show up when they write something for you? Yep. You don't even have to write it. So they call no. you and say, we need you. Yep. Wow. Yeah. You're like on retainer. I kind of think it is, yeah. I mean, it's not supposed to be. So what do you do, like, to make extra money? Like, you go around and do these corporate gigs and stuff? Yeah, total prostitution, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sold out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Works good. Sure. Well, what was it you did, Tommy Hilfiger? What do you have to do there when you go? Uh, well, I, I I was supposed to just tell some jokes, but then uh, this, they had a Holocaust survivor, you know, do like a speech, and <laughs> and you got to follow that. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's wow. like, and, and now some jokes. <laughs> oh my God! I mean, uh, why? About that Sammy Sosa, ladies and gentlemen. Like, what does Tommy Hilfiger do? He has like a corporate event to entertain his executives. I think it was I think it was a, a benefit uh, and golf tournament to raise money for the anti defamation. Oh, so they say to you, look, we're going to hire you. You tell jokes. They don't tell you that a, a Holocaust survivor is going to come on first? <laughs> no. And it's an old guy, and he gets up there, and he's like, ah, the Nazis, they, they put uh, electrodes on my penis. And, uh, my and then you and, and then they And everyone's all bummed really, out. Really, really rough. Yeah. Wow. And then you go up. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I just said, all right, um, great, now some jokes. And thankfully, they responded to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were waiting for some uh, relief. Huh? And then I just, you know, I segued into uh, a couple of women jokes, you know, <laughs> women's rights and stuff like that and they were like oh that's, uh, that's, that's hey, 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 you want to hear about well, the that's, holocaust that's it's a true story mm -hmm. yeah holocaust is a very interesting story <laughs> that's true, that's it's true. Six well you know about those lampshades right you know with the lampshades and the <laughs> yeah how about that hitler well, i can't do it like you do but that hitler was a hitler was an interesting guy and here's an interesting guy yeah hitler yeah complicated guy yeah yeah, boy. Oh, boy. Let's see. Uh, why are they Why are they asking me to ask you if you ever got arrested in Mexico? I don't know. Did you? Who are you talking no, to? The dead? I used to get drunk down there. Oh, you got oh. drunk down there. Yeah, I used to. I broke my nose a couple times. Yeah, you're not a drunk anymore, though. No. You're off the sauce. Yeah, I'm off the you sauce. told me that. I'm not saying I don't fake injury to get prescription meds once in a while. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, who does? I mean, yeah. No uh, big deal. It's a tough business. Uh, yeah. Who's on Saturday Night Live now? Do you even know? I don't know. I know you probably don't either. I haven't been there for a while. Jimmy Fallon does Jimmy the news. Fallon, Jimmy Fallon, Tina Fey. Uh, what about the the Monkey Boy guy? I think he's leaving this year. He was our. And it was sad because I one of the parts I got to do was Regis, and he was a great Gilman. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you like Regis? Yeah, I like Regis. I, I I admire what he's done. Yeah. It's time for him to retire, though. I mean, go enjoy his life. What is he still oh, doing? No, he's for? not going to stop. Yeah. I co-hosted that recently, and it was the most unbelievable. It's like an explosion at seven thirty a.m. when he, he comes in, and it's it's just him being Regis. Like Daryl, go on to Daryl Regis, Phil, but here Joy's in the back. Gelman's walking around. He's got combination skin. <laughs> <laughs> combination skin. The other day he had frizzies. The other day it was split ends. He calls me on the phone. He says, "Reg, I'm losing my wow." <laughs> <laughs> He's got a lot. He talks a lot. He talks a lot, and of course, the the punch, the 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 thought ends with a yell. Yeah, yeah. I said, Gelman, why don't you just wrap all your jewelry and become a ballerina? <laughs> <laughs> and that makes it work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, don't uh, you love that Kathy Lee Gifford really had nothing to do with the success? Didn't you think for a long time that the reason people watch was Kathy Gifford? Then she left, and the show does even better. Yeah. I love that. Kelly is amazing. She's Kelly amazing. does well, and I I'm rooting for her. Yeah. Now, you had done it with Kathy Lee. Yeah, Kathy Lee was a little rough on me. Yeah? Why? Yeah, I mean, like... Because she, she's a bitch? She'd have you on the show, and then yeah, she'd... That's one reason. She'd ask you, like, uh, to do a voice, like, and, and then, like, one time, you know, and then she'd just go, I don't know. Yeah, oh, she's so talented. Go, you know, she'd just go, I don't know, needs a little work, right, folks? Really? Oh, my goodness. Oh. Have me on the show and backdoor me one time, why don't you? <laughs> yeah, right. Jesus. <laughs> Things are terrible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Kathy Lee so old is like, do Henry Ford. Right. Yeah. <laughs> don't you love that she's rough on the eyes now? Like, she doesn't even have her look. Her hair's all falling out. I always thought that one of the eyelids, it was this, the Hillary, it, actually Hillary has, no, Hillary doesn't do this, but it's that, that one of the eyelids would fall. Yeah. Like out of, like, t like a shock to the nervous system from just total rage. <laughs> you know, like Hillary is like, her mouth... Her mouth will smile, but her eyes don't. Right. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? She's angry. Like it's all, it can't match them. <laughs> it's yeah, hard to put so the two together. Right. You know, and, and, you know, you can imagine being married to but that Kathy guy. Kathy Lee really sandbagged you. You should just turn to Kathy Lee and say, you know what? You don't have any talent. 
You can't do a voice. You can't know, sing. And I had just gotten on Saturday Night Live, and uh, they, I mean, I was like, it's all scared and everything. And right. And just like hammering me. Right, making and, you look bad. And the Monica Lewinsky story had uh, just broken that morning. She was like, you know what? I don't know if we really, you know. We should be talking about this. This is people's tragedy. I don't want to be talking about this right now. Hillary is like a friend of mine. Oh, come oh, on. And, and Hillary's man. a friend of hers. Yeah, and, uh, you know and, and Frank gave me, and, and Frank gave anal to, wanted to give anal to that woman in the. Yeah. I, I have to say she was nice to, uh, she sent a CD to, or some kind of, her, a CD of her songs or something to her, my daughter. Do you think that's nice? I don't know. Do you think that's a mean act? Yeah, what'd you pay for that? <laughs> I'm going to get you now. I'm going to send one of my CDs to your daughter. That'll shut you up. Here's a Christmas CD for her. Yes, uh, I don't know your name. Hey, line four. <laughs> Kevin Eubanks. Oh, Kevin Eubanks impressionist. Look at this. To go with your Jay Leno. Oh, <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> All right. He's going to work with you. Give Daryl a chance. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, well, uh, here's something interesting. I guess he's like Sammy Sosa. <laughs> you got a found cork in his bed. You know, that's a thing. <laughs> there you go. All right. Very good. So a cork in his bed. That'd be like Tommy Lee dropped his drawers and a sock fell out. <laughs> right, Kevin? Yeah, I hung up on him. Oh. I had enough of his impression. That's when he's supposed to have the outburst of laughter. Hey, there was a couple of things I wanted to just uh, get to before we do the news. And, and by the way, go see Daryl tonight through Sunday at Caroline's in Manhattan. I should get over there. I just think you were going to come last time. But I know. I, but you look at you. You got. I mean, if I don't go out, I mean, I take care of my daughter and I have TiVo and books yeah. and spare ribs. And you stay home. Yes. I wow. do. You don't need sex? Uh, yeah, I, I, I do. What I, do you do? Porn? <laughs> Be honest. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like Jay. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. 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 I got a little, little porn. <laughs> well, once in a while, a little do double stuffed oriental sluts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank what are you doing for yourself? I do good. I, I you do. whack off, huh? Sure. Why not? Don't you? Nah, I get a girlfriend. Oh well, you know, I get a little of that sometimes too. But mm -hmm. you get I, I, work, I, I, I do what I can do. I do. <laughs> I do as well as I can do. It's now. basically right. prescription medication and whacking off. Yeah, <laughs> that's what life becomes eventually. Yeah. yeah. All right. Just getting back to yesterday's show for one second. VH1. Mm -hmm. This guy explains why Smells Like Teen Spirit is the best song of the last 25 years. the last years. 25 years. You're going to explain it. I would just like to know why it's the best song of the last 25 years. Nirvana smells like teen spirit. A lot of people, a lot of people just crank their TVs up to 11 or higher or 21, whatever it goes up to. Because this is a song that, uh, I mean, we talked about being definitive, breaking through. This is a song that established uh, a whole generation in terms of representing them. It's what punk music was to a particular generation. Nirvana and smells like teen spirit is to another. That's a dumb explanation. Yeah, I thought he was eventually going to make some sense. Yeah, who, I mean, he's only he's rambling. I don't follow that. Me neither. It's like a Sharpton explanation. Yeah, you do Sharpton. I've been watching him lately. I'm pretty. <laughs> You're going to put him in? <clears throat> yeah, who do you do? I I do. Uh, let's see. Sharpton's Chris. tough. Well, Sharpton is very <clears throat> is a broken nose and uh, or some kind of nasal thing, and he the thing he's always doing is backpedaling while insulting, <laughs> like you know, and it, I it, you know be like uh, I did not call Mayor Giuliani a bozo. I said bozo could done a good a job of Giuliani. Clearly, that's not calling Giuliani a bozo. <laughs> <laughs> That's not saying Giuliani is Bozo. How could Giuliani be Bozo when Bozo is not Giuliani? There's a world of difference. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. Between calling Giuliani a Bozo and saying he has similar talent to Bozo. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he but he's, he's into the Jesse Jackson category yeah. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, yeah, he, he's um, criticized. Yeah, Jesse, the best Jesse story in history was the Taliban episode. Which he was? Was you going to go see the Taliban? He yeah. said they called him. Yeah. Yeah. And he was like, want me to do that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's like, I love uh, when you do that. <clears throat> it's like, uh, let me see, I got to get the. I did not contact a Taliban. They, in fact, contacted me. What happened was this. <laughs> <laughs> I had a hang up on my machine. So I stalled 69. <laughs> and a voice said, Who's this? I said, Who's this? They said, Who's this? I said, No. I stalled 69, you. <laughs> 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 I had a great laugh over what transpired. I called appropriate authorities. 
Washington, D.C., and rat a tat tat. <laughs> I try. I try to contact my friend Gary uh, to tell him how funny it was, but I got I was redialed by mistake. <laughs> I, actually, I actually got I got the Taliban. <laughs> At first, I thought it was my friend Gary uh, trying to be funny because the guy on the other end was like. <laughs> <laughs> that's, how I knew, that's how I knew it was a Taliban. <laughs> you, you must make a lot of dough doing commercials or something, right? I mean, do you do, you, do, you do, do you voices? Do you do voiceovers and voices for commercials? Yeah, I started doing like some cartoon stuff. Yeah, yeah do I'm that. Still, I'm doing, I don't turn anything down. You know? No, not really. Maybe I'll get you involved with my cartoon. I'm doing uh, Howard Stern the High School Years for uh, TNN. I did, uh, I, yeah, I did that. Which is Spike it's Television now. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah, they changed well, their name. Yeah, tell me what I can do. All right, I'll, I'll hire you. Yeah. You, he could be your Harry Shearer. He'll just do every other voice. Yeah, I'll just have you do a bunch of voices. I'd love it. Seriously. Well, we'll see. Okay. <laughs> see if you pass the audition. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, Debbie Schlussel. Hi, Debbie. Debbie? Oh, she's gone. Why does she call and hang up? Yeah, what's she doing? My favorite thing is when someone's talking to you on the phone and you don't even talk. <laughs> I mean, what are you going to do? <laughs> right, Howard? Right? <laughs> I'm busy doing other stuff. <laughs> yes, I'm, <ignoring> it. <laughs> I'm a tough voice to do, though. Very few people uh, yeah. do. Yeah, Why have is you that? watched him and see, trying to see where he... <laughs> No, nah, he didn't bother. I, no, I've heard. Uh, I've heard a couple of great uh, ones. Um, uh, Elon Gold does me. Yeah, he does it you really well. I think Jimmy Fallon does you pretty well too. Yeah, yeah. and, and uh, there's another guy who does me. Well, actually, Michael McKeon did me. I'm Michael McKeon did a pretty good job. It's yeah. funny. Yeah, it's like I think it kind of once you see someone do it really well, and you think that's the way it should be done, you don't want to do it. Right. You see, you're honorable. Yeah. Well, you don't rip them off. No. It's easy to rip off someone's impression. It is. Yeah, because they've done all the work and they found the angle. Right, they figured it out. Yeah, although mm -hmm. I thought Jimmy's was pretty original, though. You going to do news with us or are you going to just... Yeah, whatever you want. You don't care? No, let's hang out. You'll stay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you don't have to go date. No. You got that porn collection. <laughs> right. Just going back and watching the kids. Yeah. All right. There's no sex that's imminent. <laughs> Might as well stay with us. Yeah. All right, we're going to be back right after these words with the news. Daryl Hammond, see him uh, tonight through Sunday night at Caroline's in Manhattan. For tickets, call 212-757-4100. Here's model actress Angie Everhart on her relationship with Howard Stern. John, you have a question? Yeah, can I ask Angie a question? Go ahead. Angie, was Howard great in a sack? Is that what you're uh, implying? Can I answer that, Howard? Yes. <sighs> Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. You can't hear the answer. The Howard Stern Show. Rock Radio, 92.3, K-Rock. EFP 7 Miriam. All right, we uh, have a special guest today, Daryl Hammond. Thank you, thank you. It was a uh, morning radio war we won, and we got Daryl to come on here. Yeah. Everyone was fighting over him. Really? That's right. Tonight, it was between us and the Z Morning Zoo, and we won. <laughs> That's not true, is it? No. No. <laughs> Daryl Hammond tonight through Sunday. Was there a glimmer of uh, a hope there? I was for you? Hoping, oh, yeah. okay. Uh, tonight through Sunday, Caroline's in Manhattan for tickets called 212 757 4100. All right, one last phone call for Daryl, then we'll do the news. Uh, Miguel, you're on the phone. Hey, buenos dias, man. Buenos dias, mi sabes de pesca la cocina. Go ahead. <laughs> hey, listen, can you ask Daryl to do the, um, the Hushnik Philbin skit? Hushnik Philbin? Yeah, Rash, you mean Rashid Philbin? Rashid Philbin? No, Who's no, no. It, it was with Christina Ricci that you yeah. were like, all right, you already got the goat, yeah. you got the cheese, you got the rice. Yeah. What's that about? It was a, we did Who Wants to Eat? <laughs> yeah, in Bangladesh. Who wants to eat? Regis Philbin. Yeah, Rashid oh. Philbin was Who Wants to Eat. Oh, oh I get it now. You, you've got the goat, you've got the bowl of rice. Yeah, something like that. Or you can go for this tasty goat. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. You're going, we're talking about a goat. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. Oh, guy likes it. Hey, so uh, we're going to do some news now. Good. We're going to figure out what's going on with the news. Mm -hmm. What were you and Robin talking about in there? Uh, Iraq. Oh, really? What were you? Iraq? Iraq. No. Iraq. <laughs> Nice. Daryl went into your newsroom. Yes. And I said, don't go in because she's preparing the news. And he went in anyway. <laughs> I just wanted to say hi. It was a long time. Would you ask her out? No. No. 
She's amazing. She's got a but, boyfriend. Uh, yeah. I don't have that kind of confidence anymore. Anyway. <laughs> she rejected. you. She, she what? Did you go a, out with Daryl? Well, I can't, can I? She's way out of the way. Do whatever you want. Out of my Oh, leg. I can't. Well, ask, I, ask her I, out. I don't feel that I can. <laughs> ask her out as Bill Clinton. I think she'd say yes. Yeah. <laughs> or Jesse Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't date Jesse Jackson. No? Would you date a guy who could do Jesse Jackson? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Oh, Robin Quiver, <laughs> Jesse Jackson, let's make love. Let's, let's, let's look, look here. 